Good evening. It is about 6.35. We're running a little late, but we have two candidates for Moscow City Council in the studios tonight to take your calls. The phone number is 892-9200, and after opening statements, we will be taking calls from listeners for Moscow City Council candidates Aaron Ament and Dan Karskalen. They are running for three um, open seats on the Moscow City Council, and uh, people who live within the city of Moscow uh, can vote for up to three, and the winners get four-year terms. Now, there are four candidates running. It's, um, it's all one election, and the other candidates are Wayne Krauss and Tom Lamar, and you may have heard from them on Monday night here on KRFP Moscow. Uh, if not, you can actually uh, download or uh, stream with a pop-up player on the Radio Free Moscow website that candidate forum from Monday night. So um, tonight we'll m- welcome Aaron Ament and Dan Karskalen. Uh, the winners of this uh four-way race will join Tim Brown, Sue Scott, and Walter Steed on the Moscow City Council. They all have two years left in their terms, as does Mayor Nancy Cheney, who breaks tie votes and presides over the Moscow City Council. The vote is on Tuesday, November 8th. All indications are the polling place will be as usual for citywide elections. That would be the Lataw County Fairgrounds 4-H building, which is located across White Avenue from Safeway on the east side of town. Uh, polls will be open 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. You can also vote uh, absentee in advance of the election. Next Tuesday is the last day to request a mailed absentee ballot, and on Thursday, November 4th, is the last day to vote absentee in person, and voting absentee in person means going to the Lataw County Courthouse Auditor's Office during business hours. And um, also on the ballot, November 8th, is the Moscow School District $1.97 million continuing levy increase. Uh, that will be for voters who live in the Leta or in the Moscow School District 281, and uh, so those people can only vote on that election. And apparently, there's a fire district election out in the rural areas as well that day. But um, some people, if you live in the city limits, can vote in this city council election format tonight. One minute opening statement. Uh, one minute to answer each question from the phone lines. I have some backup questions, but we're looking to get a lot of activity on the phone lines. Uh, my name's Lee Robardis. I'll be uh, running the board and, uh, and moderating. The phone number once again is 208-892-9200. If you are listening online on our website, there is, um, a couple minute delay for the sound, so don't be confused by that. Uh, you should be able to hear the candidates uh, answer your questions over the phone if you stay on the line when you call in. Anyway, that's 892-9200, and we're going to start with opening statements. Dan Karskellen has elected to go first on the opening statement, so turn off your mic here and uh, take it away, Dan. Thanks, Lee. Uh, as Lee mentioned, I'm Dan Karskellen. I'm uh, one of the incumbents running for re-election. Uh, I think that we've done a pretty good job so far on the council in my in the last four years. Got a lot of things done. Uh, I'd like to uh, continue on with some of the things that that we've started. Uh, one of the one of my biggest uh, ideas is to have a, a joint ball field project with the school district on the Joseph Street ball fields, plus uh, a couple other little things like. Uh, showing more uh, community support, at least city support, with with the school district and with the university with some badging or other sorts of markings on our on city vehicles to, to show solidarity with the university and the city and the school district. So anyhow, I look forward to some good questions tonight. Okay, that was Dan Karskalen and now Aaron Ament. Yeah, uh, hi, Aaron Ament. Um, I'm running in this election because I feel that over the last four years the voice of the citizens in the Moscow government has been eroded and I would like to stop that. I think that's the thing that sets me apart from uh, Dan and from Wayne is that uh, I believe the citizens should be 
invited into the room at the beginning of the discussion, uh, not just invited into the room to watch the vote being taken. I uh, look forward to your questions tonight. So let's get going. Okay, KRFP Moscow. The phone number is 892-9200. That's 892-9200. And uh, we'll take calls in the order they receive. Uh, they're received. There are two phone lines. And uh, the first question will go to Aaron Ament first. Uh, since you've both served on the city council, why don't you uh, explain some of the successes, uh, that what you consider successes in the past on the city council uh, during your tenure, tenure personally? Uh, one success that we've had, I guess, for me would be the uh, the Walmart store. And one of the things that we tried to do when uh, Walmart tried to locate a super center on the uh, east side of town uh, was one of the one of the problems is that they they wanted to abandon the property that they'd already asphalted and uh, build us another asphalt ocean. Um, now they have rebuilt their building in their old dark store, and so. Uh, I see that I see that as a win. I think we also won when the uh, councilors decided to put in a stop sign at four-way stop at D and Mountain View. I think also it was a win when the council I was on decided to have uh, meetings, development meetings with uh, neighborhoods that were to be uh, potentially impacted by. Uh, Development. Okay, I'll just make it clear. Uh, I'm not sure if I made it clear before the, we started. Uh, when I hold up one finger, that means uh, 10 seconds left in the minute. Okay. Okay, and each uh, candidate has a minute to answer questions. Uh, now we'll go to uh, Dan Carscale and your successes. I think that uh, one of the successes, and, and none of it is, as I said before, you know, none of this is all just on me. Uh, you, you can't do anything by yourself on the council. But, you know, we did complete what had been started as far as the uh, – Moscow Comprehensive Plan. Uh, we've, it, I, you know, and it's not even a council thing, but I think it's a good thing that, and I supported it wholeheartedly. The, the pavement recycling program that the um, street department's done here lately has been a really good thing, and, and I'm glad that we got going on that because there's a lot of gravel streets that have turned to a, a more of a paved surface that's really helped out with our dust control in town. Um, I think that it, that we uh, help things out as far as streamlining the process with uh, the change in the big box ordinance here recently. You know, I know Aaron disagrees on that case, but you know, well, I'm sure there'll be more discussion about that later. Okay, that was Dan Carskellen. Eight nine two nine two zero zero is the uh, number to call. And uh, the next question will go to uh, Dan Carskellen first. Um, what's the status of the zoning of the seventy acres at the intersection of Mountain View and Troy Highway? Rather, a, a big. Uh, uh, farm field right now, can that land called the Thompson property be limited to uh, mixed use only, or is it now possible that the entire parcel can be used for a mega store or, or another large development? It's zone motor business, so right now, whatever is allowed in the motor business zone is what what is you know what could be built, and I suppose that a large scale retail establishment could be built there. Uh, you know that's that's where the the public's voice comes in is is during that first rezone process when when we come in and, and we talk about changing it from in that case from farm ranch to motor business that that was that's where the public's voice comes in and uh, planning and zoning recommended the change and the council followed up on it. Okay, that was Dan Carscallon, and now we'll go to Aaron Ament. Uh, the idea that citizens can. Uh can tend to the uh, future of our city by going to uh, to zoning meetings to uh, check on the, to to have a say in the zoning is good as far as it goes. But when you're talking about zoning, you're not allowed to talk about any specifics, and so that really isn't uh, that really isn't a satisfactory way to do it. Okay, that's uh, um, Aaron Ament, and the phone number is eight nine two. Nine two zero zero. We might as well continue along with the topic and just go. Um, so there were recent changes to the large retail establishment ordinance uh, regulating what we call big box stores. 
um, right now that eliminated the the uh, conditional use permits. I believe the the uh, vote by the city council was just last month. Uh, conditional use permit process and also uh, the uh, po- uh, as part of the conditional use par- process, the uh, public hearings that would go along with that. Um, do you think public hearings are appropriate on proposals for individual big box stores, or do you think public hearings should only be held on zoning sections of the city in question before a proposal is even put forward or thought of? So this would go to uh, Aaron Amant first. I like the conditional use process. Um, there's there's more to it than just uh, the citizen involvement. There's also the in- information that that would have been made available under the conditional use process in a large stale, large retail establishment ordinance. We had studies in there, not only economic impact studies, but traffic studies, water, sewer studies, studies that would be done so that we could make sure that the cost of development was paid by the developer and not laid on the table until some later time when the citizens of Moscow could put it pick, could pick that cost up. Okay, and that was Aaron Ament, and now Dan Karskellen. Yeah, a lot of the things that uh, would uh, be talked about as far as the studies that Aaron was talking about, a lot of that stuff is covered in the design manual. It's a, it's a fairly large document, and you know when something comes in that's that is pretty large, it's going to have to meet those uh, requirements that are in that design manual. And I, I have confidence in our. Um, Community Development Department to take care of such items. Okay, and that was Dan Karskell, and the phone number is 892-9200. We have someone on the phone line, so go ahead, call her. Um, hmm. I yeah. am interested to know what each of the candidates is, um, how they stand on the current school levy issue. Okay, and if you didn't quite hear it, she's interested in knowing uh, how you feel on the uh, um school levy issue. I think they heard you. Um, so go ahead, uh, Dan Karskellen, first. Yeah, I, I support the levy. I, I'm a graduate of Moscow High School. I, I attended all my 12 years there. I uh, started at Russell School and, and went through the junior high and through the high school. Uh, my wife works for the school district. She's, she's got a lot of uh, your student-athlete's health in, in her hands at her position as head athletic trainer. I have two sisters-in-law that, that are teachers in the school district and, and, you know, many friends and acquaintances also within the school district. But, you know, it's, it's part of my blood as far as living here in Moscow and growing up here. And, you know, I, su- I support the levy in, in this levy election. Okay, and that was Dan Karskell, now Aaron Ament. Yes, and I, too, am in support of public education. Um, we, with the kind of government we have, we need a solid education for our people so that they can make the decisions that they are still able to meet. Um, I will be supporting this levy. Um, my favorite uh, leisure activity is reading. I learned to read in public school 213. Um, I thank my teachers for that. Uh, that has is, that is done me well throughout my life. Okay, and that was Aaron Ament. Um, the phone number is 892-9200. And the next question will go to Aaron Ament first. And uh, as long as we're on the topic, uh, what do you think about the uh, um, Idaho legislature's uh, changes to the education system in Idaho? And uh, how can uh, city council people um, impact that or have influence on that? We're just going to have to be careful with uh, with the money that we have. The the fact that we're voting on this levy is the just a, another cost that the state has put on the uh, put down to the local level. Um, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to pick those costs up. Um, I certainly not in favor of uh, I'm in favor of very few of the actions of the of the Idaho legislature, uh, just like our. Our, our federal government, they uh, have no idea what the word uh, compromise means. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a fan. That was Aaron Ament, now Dan Karskellen. Yeah, I, there's a lot of changes that have been made that, you know, we don't even know what the effects are going to be yet. And I, I, I'm, I know that talking with uh, Superintendent Dale Kleinert that, you know, the school district's going to do what they can to 
make good on what changes have been made and, and still do a good job of educating our students. Um, they're, you know, I don't like that they are, they're putting the burden on the local, but if they're going to do it, I, you know, I'm glad we're ste- stepping up to help take care of it. And that was Dan Carskellen. Uh, we have Dan Carskellen and Aaron Ament in the studios. They are uh, two of the four candidates running for three seats on the Moscow City Council, three seats that are open, and the top three vote-getters will get on the council and join Tim Brown, Sue Scott, and uh, Wayne Krause, no, um, Walter Steed. And the other two candidates are Wayne Krause and Tom Lamar. So the phone number is 892-9200. If you have a question, and don't count on me to ask your question because I may not get to it unless you call in. So, um, 892-9200, we have a, a question that will go to Dan Karskellen first. Is restoring intercity bus service between Moscow and Pullman a priority for you? Why or why not? I, th- I think that that was a good thing that, that we had going there. Um, I can't remember what the cost was as far as per person i know i know it had that a lot of ridership and i know we're still increasing ridership on our um moscow valley transit you know even though i think we're the only users of moscow valley transit now since lewiston started their own transit system uh i look forward to uh us getting our um our transit center built in the next few years you know, as long as funding takes care of it, you know, we don't have to worry about take paying for it locally. That's great. You know, and then we're going to be able to hopefully increase our routes within town and hopefully bring back that inner city one because I know there are a lot of people that work at WSU and a lot of students that rode back and forth on it as well. And that was Dan Carskell and now Aaron Ament. Uh, during my time on the city council, I was uh, a big supporter of uh, Moscow Earth. Valley Transit and its director Tom LaPointe, who did a, a fantastic job on increasing the uh, the ridership of that. Um, during my time on council, along with uh, Bob Stout and John Dickinson, we were able to to raise the the city's uh, contribution to Valley Transit, I believe, by ten thousand dollars, and we were also able to take the the strings off of that so that uh, Valley Transit was able to use it as they pleased. I hope that we can and I will be looking into this uh, when I'm uh, sitting on the council trying to see if there's anything that I could do to help uh, put the bus back between uh, Moscow and Pullman. I know that it was uh, was told by uh, more than one university professor that it was a a valuable recruiting tool for them to have uh, since they offer a lot of courses at both universities. uh, So. Okay, that was Aaron Amant. 892-9200. Questions for candidates Dan Karskellen and Aaron Amant running for Moscow City Council. The next question will go to Aaron Amant first. And uh, comment on the uh, draft water comprehensive plan now before the City Council, especially if there's uh, parts you don't agree with. Um, I'm going to have to tell you that I'm not, I'm not familiar with that right now. Um, I will be once, I, once I'm seated. I believe that, uh, that as we go forward with our water use, we should use water like we only have one source available, that being uh, the, the deep aquifer, um, uh, we, two sources, and the shallow Wanapum aquifer. And, and so we need to protect our water, act like we don't have any other sources, while at the same time we need to put a plan in place uh, for surface water storage so that should federal money or state money ever show up, we're ready to act and to, to pounce on that money. Um, I think that uh, conservation has shown the, the, the best savings in, in, in water. Um, we think we've been pumping below our, our, project, our projection that we made with PBAC for the last six or seven years. I'd like that to continue. Okay, that was Aaron Ament and now Dan Karskellen. Yeah, I think we've got a good plan getting going here, and, and hopefully we'll be able to put it in place before the end of the year. Uh, I th- actually think it's going to take a little longer than that with all the review process and everything. Uh, like Aaron said, you know, we, we started here recently with, uh, with getting this uh, surface water study going, and I think that's a, it's a great thing. You know, um, the city of Troy had, you know, when I was on the county zoning commission, the city of Troy applied to have a, to increase their surface water storage. And I, you know, hope that we don't affect that in some way, but it shows that there can be a way to 
store the water and use it for municipal use and there are several different plans and and they're they're very expensive we've done a good job here conserving water here in the city of moscow with our conservation pr- plans and and hopefully this in the future we'll be able to put this reservoir together okay that was dan Karskellen. uh once again eight nine two nine two zero zero. we are taking phone calls from listeners uh we'd like you to participate that's the whole idea so the next question will go to dan Karskellen first um Let's see. City elected officials taking a stand on redistricting. The redistricting is done for the next 10 years. However, it, it seemed uh, like uh, the uh, city council was divided this summer on uh, whether or not to uh, take a stand on uh, some of the uh, draft proposals. Originally, one of the plans was to actually split Lataw County and the city of Moscow. Um, that didn't happen, but uh, w- what's your feelings about uh, taking a stand on that? Dan Karskallen first. Well, I'll, do, I'll say that what we did end up with with Ty and Benoit and Leitau together was what I would what I personally was in favor of. But as a council, I think as a nonpartisan group, you know, we are elected officials, but we're not partisan elected officials. So I, don't, I didn't think it was appropriate for us as a council to take a stand on it. We could take any kind of personal stand we wanted on it, and that was great. And I, you know, I made my voice heard with the uh, with whoever needed to hear it, but. You know, we're, we were just going to have to deal with whatever came about, splitting the ta- splitting the city and splitting the county. I definitely wasn't in favor of it personally, but again, as as a city council, I don't think that that we really had a reason to say anything about it. Okay, that was Dan Karskellen. Now Aaron Amend. Uh, the city council has the has the right, if not the duty, to speak to any issue that affects the city of Moscow. Uh, splitting the city of Mos- Moscow. Um, affected the city of affected us it definitely should have been addressed uh perhaps the the delay in addressing that was because uh we have uh some partisan members on our nonpartisan uh city council okay that was Aaron amount we now have two callers on the line i'm going to take the uh caller who uh called in first if he's still there and or she uh, and this will go to Aaron amount first uh, caller go ahead is this for me? Yeah, I think so. Yes, this is actually for Dan, and it is uh, um, the ads that he has been running um, make it look like Moscow is anti-business, and I'd like to explain why he thinks, and he, you know, they're the only ones advertising. Why is Moscow anti-business? When I know there's multiple businesses who who have located in Moscow recently because Moscow is Moscow. Okay, and we'll stick to the format and go to Aaron Ament first on that. Sure. I think that when uh, when I hear people saying that Moscow is anti-business, I think what they're really saying is that they are, are anti-regulation. Uh, I think what they're saying is that, uh, that we can trust business to always do uh, what is best for everybody. Uh, sadly, I don't think that that, 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 is, that that is true. Um, Moscow is not anti-business. Moscow is, is uh, pro-Moscow. Um, there's no reason that, uh, that we shouldn't vet um, the, the big businesses that wanted to move into our community. Um, and there's no reason that we should not have uh, regulations uh, to, uh, to, uh, to see that what goes into the community fits and is workable. That was Aaron Ament, and now Dan Karskellen. Yeah, I just want to clear up that those aren't my ads; those are somebody else's. I, I happen to ha- my picture happens to be on it, and you know I thank for people for their support. But uh, I don't think that Moscow's anti-business. I think that there was a perception, and there has been for a while. But I, I like to think that the current council we were doing a pretty good job of of getting rid of that perception. And I don't think it's the city's the city council's job to make sure any business succeeds. I think that that's you know competition is what's supposed to take care of that. And you know we do we do have to have our regulations, and we do have regulations, and those need to be followed. And, and you know, I I think they are followed in in most all cases. Okay, eight nine two nine two zero zero is the number to call, and we have a caller on the other line. I do believe. Nope, that person hung up. 
Once again, 892-9200. Both lines are open. It's 7 o'clock. You're tuned to KRFP Moscow. We have candidates Dan Karskalen and Aaron Ament in the studios of Radio Free Moscow tonight. And this past Monday, we had the other two candidates for the three open seats on the city council, and they were Wayne Krauss and Tom Lamar. And uh, people will be able to cast ballots for up to three of the candidates. So, seeing as we have another phone call on line one, KRFP, you are on the air. Hi there. I'd like to ask uh, the candidates uh, what uh, their feelings are about the the megalos coming through town. And uh, I'd like them to also uh, acknowledge that these loads are not even benefiting our economy at all. Uh, The are not bringing business to Moscow, uh, talking about pro-business here. Um, yeah. Okay, and that will go to Dan Karskellen first. Yeah, I, I personally don't have a problem with the mega loads coming through town. Uh, these oversized loads got the proper permits from the state of Idaho. Are those permits uh, at the proper cost from the state? That's a state-level decision, and, and I know our state legislatures are, are looking at that come in the next uh, legislative session. As far as an economic benefit, I think, you know, people misunderstood what what stance we took on that. Uh, You know, we said if people want to come spend the money that are doing these, then, you know, if they're parking up at the the other side of uh, Marsh Hill, there really isn't any place to stay there, so come back here and stay if you're going to spend the day the night, which is spending the day since they're running at night. But I would would contend that... uh, Pie Hole Pizza has probably done a bang-up business since this has started. They, they've they had a pretty good run here in the past several weeks. Okay, that was Dan Karskellen, and now Aaron Ament. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, what we're doing is we're hauling uh, Korean, equi- Korean equipment to Canada so that we can help them produce oil for China. Um, Three things on the megalos. Number one, uh, they should not be in the Clearwater Corridor, on the Clearwater and the Locksaw. The number two, the tar sand shipments should not be should not be anywhere. That project is is wrong from the start. Um, number three, I'd rather that they weren't coming through Moscow. But if that's the choice between uh, Highway 12 and uh, and 95, I guess I guess we're it. The decision to have these go through Moscow was made years ago when uh, past city council decided that the highway should go through town and uh, not around town. As to economic development, the only economic development that has been uh, that we've seen from these megaloads is, has come from the delays that they've had in shipping them. Okay, that was Aaron Ament, and the phone number is eight nine two nine two zero zero. We'll go. We'll have one more question before we uh, take a quick musical break for uh, halftime here. Um, once again, the number is eight nine two nine two zero zero. This next question will go to Aaron Ament first. Um, what do you think of the proposal from city staff to increase the cost of closing streets for events such as Main Street? Um, they want to increase the cost possibly from the $36 it currently is to between $250 and $400 plus require a uh, insurance policy of up to a million dollars. Yes, I heard that discussion and I was uh, I, I, I didn't think much of it. I believe that when we uh, cl- close off the streets, the, in a way, that's that's economic development. Um, we bring people to town to to have a good time. They uh, they eat, they party, they have a good time, they have a good feeling about Moscow. Um, I would not like to see that uh, that festive part of our city uh, shut off. And that was Aaron Ament, and now Dan Karskellen. Yeah. And- heard yet that they were increasing that much that does seem a little steep uh but there are costs to the city when we do close down a street i mean we have to send crews out and they could be we could be having to pay them overtime wages to to do the street closures so there are costs associated with it and and even at that level i don't think you're going to recoup the costs that that it does cost the city you know and, and like aaron said if it's an economic value then they should be able to make up whatever increase there is to that permit. 
Okay, that was Dan Karskellen. Um, it's seven o.